Some of the best marriages I know are not sexually exclusive and they don't buy into the monogamous mass formation psychosis that says you have to be sexually exclusive or else the love isn't real. I'm Jeffrey Miller and my heretical idea is that open and polyamorous relationships can actually work. Radicals, dissidents, rebels, and misfits. You can call them whatever you like, but what if they're right? I'm an evolutionary psychology professor at University of New Mexico. The idea that currently interests me the most is the concept of polyamory and open relationships. And I'm also interested in what can monogamous people learn from the people who are doing these kinds of polyamorous relationships. You know, a lot of society is very focused on a kind of monogamous view of relationships, that if you love someone, you should be sexually exclusive with them. The stereotype of the 1950s nuclear family marriage is really relatively recent. Marriage has always been an evolving institution. It was largely a kind of reproductive and economic institution up until a few hundred years ago. And then in the 1700s, you get the rise of companionate marriage, where there's genuine affection and emotional bonds in the marriage. But we're still very conflicted as a society about you know, what should a good sexual relationship really look like. If someone isn't interested in a polyamorous lifestyle, what are the lessons that they can draw from people who are involved in them? One of the things that even monogamous couples could learn from polyamorous couples is uh, the importance of being clear about what would constitute cheating. What is cheating? A lot of married couples sort of think, well, having sex with someone else is obviously cheating. But they don't really discuss things like if you have a crush on uh, a coworker, if you flirt with someone, if you watch porn, um, if you're still in touch with an ex on social media, is that cheating? I think for anybody who's young and married or in a serious relationship now, the importance of defining what is cheating is especially salient and crucial given changes in technology. If you have a crush on a particular celebrity, it will be easy soon you know, to make high resolution, immersive VR porn that depicts that celebrity having sex with you. It's going to be affordable, it's going to be easy, you'll be able to have technologically supported sexual fantasies of any sort that you want. What's within the bounds of the relationship? And to have a clear and conscious and honest discussion about that. So I got nothing against monogamy for most people. But there are some people who, for whom it doesn't work very well. If you're a bisexual woman and you marry a man, how do you have sex with women? You're no longer bisexual. So for some people, um, an open relationship or a polyamorous relationship is really the only sustainable, viable, ethical way to do a marriage. So I think we need to kind of get used to the idea of multiple kinds of marriages working for different kinds of people. I don't expect everyone to adopt a lot of these practices. They're not right for everybody. But I think at the moment, the public debate about sex and relationships and reproductive policy is incredibly narrow and incredibly boring and does not reflect the whole diversity of stuff that people do. How is traditional monogamous marriage gonna deal with the fact that technology can actualize any sexual preference you have and customize it and make it real and compelling? Maybe some marriages will say, you're not allowed to do any of that metaverse shit. You can't do that, it's not allowed. But I don't think that's gonna be viable. It's just gonna push all of this under the radar. So I think the technology is going to force every monogamous couple, one way or another, to be more open and honest about their fantasies and their sexuality and their desires. And I think it would be helpful for us to be kind of prepared for it and braced for it and ready for it before the technology blindsides us and creates a, like a massive cultural crisis around marriage that makes the 1960s revolution in, you know, in sex look like child's play. Interview with Jeffrey Miller, take one. If I'm walking down the street with my wife, she'll usually notice an attractive woman or man on the street and kind of elbow me and go, look, look at that. That's great.